Ayo hey, LAZ After this Ebron story Make sure y'all check my exclusive interview With Farrah Mitchell That's an attorney at law That's helping dudes get home out that penitentiary With the new federal laws that just got passed January 4th Make sure y'all tune in And spread that information Hey yo, make sure y'all check that new video on YouTube By the society It's called Parliament You heard? And it's all type of cities and states on this track Reppin' Leave a comment, tell them Z-Man sent you. Hey, yo, shout out to the whole Brownsville, Brooklyn. Shout out to the bro Ebron. You heard a few from Brownsville out there getting them comments. Let me know what projects, what block, what strip, what area in the ville you repping. You heard a few from Brooklyn. I need you to do the same. You heard z Lord. Shout out to my bros up in Dykeman, 200 block. You heard, shout out to my whole Gen Pop fam, comment gang. I need y'all to get in them comments. Tear this up, you heard. Make sure that algorithm is fluffmatic. You already snow removal. I got heat dropping all week. Make sure you go check out them two new Black Knowledge episodes with that war with Schenectady. Part one, part two is on the channel. If you got crazy jail and hood stories, get at Broadcasting live from new york city it's the hottest channel on these youtube streets the best jail stories and hood stories are here the whole visit area was going bananas bananas homeboy they say he was trying to get up and they was like don't get up son don't get up son your spine is gonna come out. We see your bones. We see your spine, son. Don't try to get up. They saw that nigga spine bone, nigga. Everything I tell y'all is from the heart. It's real. It's real because I lived it. And once you live this, you cannot forget it. Every day I went on the alley. You never know what to expect, like I told y'all. But I knew I was gonna expect something going over that bridge. Cause every day is a different day. This day I go in, I got the adults, grown men. And when I walk in my house, I hear the inmates singing. Tell me who? Been kissing you, say who? While I've been missing you, oh tell me who? Been kissing you, say who? While I've been missing you, I said what the fuck? I said death. When I walk in, and I hear something like that. It could be a red light, green light, yellow light. Today that was a red light. Because the way the man was singing, this brother was singing, he wasn't singing in a happy like the song go. Y'all know how it go. Oh, tell me who been kissing you. Say who while well, I've been missing you. No. He said it hurtfully. This man was hurt. Something like this. Ooh, been kissing you. Say who. Well, I've been missing you. I felt the pain. So right then, I knew that was red light, nigga. Red light. You gotta know, you gotta learn, you gotta know, feel. But shit ain't right. And I know that wasn't right. So I knew after I take my count, I got to go check on that one. Because something's not right. <laughs> and sure enough, I took my count. I go see him. And he's singing that same old song. And I see your bro. You all right? And he look at me. And he wasn't laying down on his bed. He was sitting on his bed rocking. And he was singing that song. So automatically, once I see the rock, and he, the way he looked at me, I told the officer, yo, crack yourself. Crack yourself for me. Crack dirty cell. Officer, crack dirty cell. 
I'm like, yo, what's up, man? What's going on, man? You see your heat, man? I'm hurting, nigga. I'm fucked up, man. I can't take this shit, man. I said, yo, hold up, bro. Hold up, hold up, hold up. What happened? Tell me, just talk to me. Yo, heat, man. I'm telling you, man. I don't want to live no more. I don't care. Wait a minute. Talk to me, bro. For what? Talk. What? What's up, man? Come on. Talk to me, man. He said, yo. Couple of weeks ago, when they delivered the mail, they gave the mail, my mail, to another inmate. The other inmate is in 14 cell. Me and this dude talk all the time. You know, at seven o'clock, you don't be here, Ebron, but at seven o'clock, that's my slot time. And at seven o'clock, I get that jack. My girl know the beat in, she get my phone call. Everybody know that's seven o'clock slot time, that's mine. And when I call my girl, she's not picking up. She was always there. And I'm wondering, what the fuck changed? Her sister get on, she went to the store. She'll be back later. She wanted to go get some cat food. She wanted to go get some dog food. I could never get up. And I know this is some bullshit. And this shit didn't start until that nigga had my mail. I think that motherfucker talking to my girl. I'm like, yo, come on, man. Nah, Eve, you don't understand this shit. This nigga come out his cell looking at me all funny and shit. I'm ready to rock that nigga world. I said, I said, hold up, son, hold up, son. You, we don't know this for, for sure, son. You got... Yo, E, I'm telling you, I'm telling you the way he come out and look at me and smirk. He said, yo, I'm telling you, let me find out, E. I said, okay, chill, 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 son. He said, no, E, but I'm telling you, I know it's that motherfucker right there. I can feel it. I can feel it, because every time I go for my slot time, he quick at you somewhere looking. I caught him looking on the corner, around the day room, everywhere, just watching me. That nigga got something to do. I said, what do you think he get talking to you? Good. I think he, I think he talking to my girl, yeah. I think you I tell you, I think he talking to my girl. And I'ma tell your brothers for real, this is me. In jail, your mind will play tricks on you. But not all the time, your mind playing tricks on you. So that's why I didn't say nothing to this brother. I listened to him. And he, he said, he, I got it all set up. Me and his last name has the same letter. He said, when we go down for the, for the visits, he go down the same visits that I go. Now, when I finally do get to her, she said she can't come to my visit. She ain't never said she can't come to my visit. Now all of a sudden she can't come. But he said, yo, he does, I got this. I got this. I'm like, yo, what, what's up? What's up? You say, Eve, you know what I'm gonna do? She said she can't come. I'm gonna call one of them, somebody else to come and visit me that day. And I'm gonna see through this motherfucker over here going to visit. And if he go on a motherfucking visit, and my lady's on that visit, I said, man, come on, you bugging now. Don't think like it. Nah, E, nah, E, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, I feel it in my heart, so I mean, why? And he just looked at me and started real rocking again, started singing. Tell me who they kissing you. Say who while well, I've been missing you. And I'm rubbing the brother back. I'm like, come on, nigga, come on, man. Come on, you want to try to call it now? You want to try to call it now? You're like, you, you like, hey, come on, come, come on, try to call it now. I get him out of the cell, he get on the phone, oh, he call us, he talking, but they arguing, they not talking. But it's, thanks, he coming back down the hall, thanks, he man. Fuck that shit, I know what I gotta do. Visit day comes. He waits. 
see him. On visits day, first thing brothers want to do is take a shower. They want to smell so such a clean, clean for the woman. He don't want no shower. He always takes a shower. But see, this was part of his plan. He waited and saw the other brother get a visit and watch him get in the shower. The brother came to him and said, yo, what's up, man? No visit today. He said, nah, man, my girl couldn't make it. He looked at him and started laughing. <laughs> yeah. And these are the brakes. He showed your son, you trying to make sure it's not, you know, just, you know, bring it up, bring it up, bring it up, bring it down. So you got jokes? Nah, man, I'll see you later, man. I'll just fuck with you. Not knowing, soon he left out the house, the phone ring. <laughs> Last night changed it all. I really had a ball. Last night changed it all. Hello? Yes. Lance got a visit. Yo, Lance, you got a visit. Yeah, that's what I was waiting for. Nigga said, yo, Lance, you ain't gonna take a shower yet. Fuck the shower. I don't need a shower. My girl ain't coming today. He said, but y'all let me find out. And they kept saying, yo, what you talking about? He said, you'll see, you'll hear about it. He said, you eat, let y'all let me out. Yo, Lance, he left. He walked out the house, hype, like he was on drugs. He wasn't on, he was not on drugs, but he walked out the house, hype, nigga, hype. And I didn't even know why he was that hype. All he was like, Joe E, thank you for everything. Like, you know, he ain't gonna coming back and shit, yo. Thanks for looking out for me, you love you and all that shit, E. I'm looking at him, I'm like, the fuck you going to visit? You ain't going home, nigga. Nigga going to visit last? He going to visit last. He went to go sit down. He had a homeboy come see him. And when he got on the visit last, guess what? His girl was on a visit, came to visit the nigga in Dirty Cell. Just like he was saying, just like he was saying, he was right all the time. That nigga that I got his letters, the coolest nigga girl. Now she coming on a visit to see him. Yo, Lance, let me tell you something. I'm glad I wasn't there because I was in the house. But my partner that works the visit, he said, yo, he, he said, when I saw that nigga, and his girl sitting down on the visit floor. He said, that jumped up, lads. Walked right up to his girl. Before, you know, a girl see him, she, she getting started like, huh? Ah. He said he ripped her from the side of her temple to her cheek. And she starts screaming. And that nigga that had his mouth that was in his house, he looked at him, and he turned around and tried to run, and let cut that nigga from the back of his nut to the crack of his ass. From the back of his nut, right here, back of his neck, to the crack of his ass. The whole visit area was going bananas. Bananas. Homeboy, they say he was trying to get up, and they was like, don't get up, son, don't get up, son. Your spine is gonna come out. We see your bones. We see your spine, son. Don't try to get up. They saw that nigga spine bone, nigga. Was it worth it? Was it worth it? Oh, man. Listen, the bells was ringing. That was stat run, nigga, for both of them. This girl and that nigga that was in the house. Violation. Violation. You can't forget shit like that, man. You know what I'm saying? You can't forget shit. When they brought him back to me, he brought him back to me, handcuffs and everything. You know they get a new charge, Lance. You know all that shit. They get a new charge. And when he came back, they brought him back to me. You know? 
baby. He said, yo, he going, I told you. I told you I knew what the fuck I was talking about. I told you. I told you I knew what I was from. And the whole house, yo, it went through the whole jail, man. It went through the whole jail. And that's when they start having big issues about the mail. The mailman, you know, whoever delivered the mail, make sure the right inmate get the mail. You understand? But that was a crazy goddamn incident. Because when it happened and I heard about it, I went out to go to see. Yo, he tore that girl up, son. She, you know, I, I ain't got nothing to say about it. She was told to fuck. She was told to fuck up, son. Bowed up. You know, you say, you say, you say, you say, right, what you say? You say he cut her where? From her temple to the side of her cheek by her mouth. Rolled up. I mean, yo, it looked like a, her mouth, her mouth looked like a, a side pocket, a flipper. You said he had a scalpel? Yeah. He had a scalpel. He had a scalpel, son. He had a scalpel. I try to tell you, son. Joe is no motherfucking joke. There's eight million ways to die. Choose one, nigga. Don't never come to jail, man. Don't never come to jail, man. Because it's not no joke. Let me tell you something. Yo, lads, you know what? You got gold in that cell. You know you got gold in your cell, right? That cell you was in, lads? You know you got you got some gold in there. You know that? I mean, there's some gold in them hills. You know where the gold is at, lads? Yeah. That toilet bowl. That toilet bowl. Everybody home right now, they live in a life. They got their sink, they toilet bowl, they showers, you know, they take everything all convenient. But when you in jail, that toilet bowl is like Jack and the Pink Star, the golden harp. That toilet bowl is your golden harp, nigga. And the reason why I say that is because that's your motherfucking refrigerator. That's your dishwasher, nigga. You gotta keep your Kool-Aid, your soda, your mayonnaise, your cold cuts in that toilet. That toilet bowl got to be crispy and clean. Crispy and clean. You got to make a love to that motherfucking toilet bowl, nigga. Cause that's your refrigerator, nigga. You eating and drinking and shitting out that motherfucker. Or the cold milk is in the toilet. Cold soda is in the toilet. Cold cuts in the toilet. Mayonnaise in the toilet. Yo shit in the toilet. Yo ass in the toilet. Yo balls in the toilet. Yo dick in the toilet. You gotta keep it clean. You heard my word? My word. I'm telling you. That has to be the cleanest thing in your cell. Cause if it ain't, you would have, I don't know, remember that cartoon y'all that used to come on every, every morning on Saturday? You got your, you got your mouth cause you don't brush your teeth. You remember that, man? You got your mouth, because you don't brush your teeth, because you're going to have air all over your motherfucking mouth. Clean that goddamn toilet, nigga. Clean this, go. Clean this. Clean this thing in the house. Clean this thing in the house. You got to cherish that toilet bowl that's your best friend. Some of them brothers and they were so goddamn nasty. I come in the morning, that toilet paper stuffed to the side of the toilet lens, past the side of the toilet where they beat off. And they didn't flush it. They just took the beat off tissue and threw it on the side of the toilet. They didn't throw this shit in the toilet to flush it. Flush it. I don't why you got all that beat off meat in the corner, nigga? The fuck is wrong with you? 
yo, yeah, yo, yeah, I'm gonna, I, 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 I'm gonna get it. Yo, motherfucker, clean that shit up. Telling yourself you got all that eat off tissue in the corner, and then the CEO female come down. Yo, can't. I'm gonna tell you, you can't do nothing about this. They gonna beat. They gonna beat. You a female. They ain't getting no po 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 nine They not getting no po nine nigga. So every ass on the gate. I don't care if she fat like Aunt your mama. They gonna beat off it. I don't care if she uglier than an onion and make you cry. They gonna beat off it. Some females are, he blowing, he beating off, he beating, he beating. In my mind, I'm like, what the fuck you expect? Saying this is jail. But, you know, I go down there and be like, yo, man, yo, 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 E, yo, E, yo, 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 stop violating, yo. Okay, E, okay, E. You know, man, yo, E, man, you know, and it's been a long time since I had some. Niggas start seeing the angry people I came in on. Yo. Yo, listen, y'all niggas chill out. I asked her, can you please um go up to the bubble and, you know, I'll take care of this. You know what I'm saying? They be like, oh, E, man, you fucking it up, nigga. You fucking it up, man. I almost had one, nigga. I almost had one. You know what they said? They almost had one? They almost bust one. They almost bust one, nigga. I have females come down there and these, 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 they start singing. Do, do, do. Another one bites this. Instead of saying bite, they be like bust. Boom, boom, boom. Another one bust the dust. Another one bust. And another one bust. Another one bust the dust. Hey, gonna catch you too. Another one bust the dust. Oh. And the females get mad and walking out the house. Oh, I can't stand the bean. It's so disrespectful. They so disrespectful. They go get the captain in them. Now we gotta search down that motherfucker. Now they coming down. Pitting niggas against the wall. Hands against the wall. Stripping motherfuckers. Butt ass naked. Bend down. Lift your nuts. Squat. You'll get a nigga like, you get uh, 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 a prisoner like Born Son, Brandon, Shaquel, you know, you, you, you see, people like them, they, they don't like to be scripts. It was some, they religion, you understand what I'm saying? They don't, you gotta respect the most, some of them didn't want to respect. You already know, that's when the fight was start. It's like, that's just that other record. Let's get it on. Mm-hmm. Them niggas are scrapping. They scrapping. Great, them scrapping, Les. Scrapping. You know what I'm saying? Now they all handcuffed and everything. And you know me, you know, I'm looking at them, they looking at me, and I'm like, honey, oh, nigga, where you go? But I knew it was coming. I knew, I, I, yo, you will, you, you, you know what's coming. You know, you know me, I'm like, yo, I got them. You know what I'm saying? They're like, yo, 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 yo. And you know, you, Les, you know I'm the eye. I, I try to ease up the shit. I got born son, and then a Brandon, and you know, a little red, to, or Joe Allen or somebody like that. You know, and I'm walking, and I say, to make a funk, that's what it is. <laughs> what it give to you, oh, to make a funk. They were like, Ebro, stop playing, nigga. Fuck that, man. They're trying to violate us, bro. you know? But I try to ease it up, because I know how to deal with them. I know how to deal with them. But like I tell you, every day is a different day. Don't ever think you're going to go and have the same day you had yesterday, because it ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen, son. It ain't going to happen. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Something about me, all right? How my life changed again 
You know, everybody like keep changing, you know. They said one thing in this world you got to accept. And I heard a preacher say this. He said this, he was looking at me when he said it too. He said, one thing you gotta accept in this world that you can. He said, you gotta accept the change. Cause you can't stop change, you guys. Change is gonna happen in your life. And you can't stop it. And you know, me growing up in Brownsville, you know, like I said, I had a great crew, man. I see all my boys come through, man. And you, you don't know what it is to be outside and all your boys is on the inside. You know, you got that emptiness. And one of my boys, we was, this was right before I got on the job too, man. You know, respect to Gallo, respect to Big Derek, Brazil, and Donald Ravenel. We was all together that, that day and me and Gallo just went he got a bag of weed, he got a bag of weed, and he was like, yo, man, let's smoke this, eh? Hey. And back then, I wasn't smoking like that, you know? But sometimes, you just take a little toke or something. I took a little toke, and we walking, talking down. Linda, over there, and we wind up over here on Livonia and Rockaway. They got a Chinese restaurant. And I was like, yo, Gallo, man. Want some Chinese food? Come on, let's go up in there. We go up in the Chinese spot. It's still here today. On Rockaway. Have Rockaway Lagoon is right there, still here. Got the Chinese food. I bought me some pork fried rice, four chicken wings, and an egg roll. I can't, I can't remember what Joe got. Gallo. His real name is Gallo. Us growing up, his name was Joe. His name is Gallo, though. All right? So we're walking back to 361. So they Muslim, you know what I'm saying? So we go up to the crib. I put my pork fried rice, right, chicken wings in the oven. Yo, Joe, let me put it in there t- before I tell I get ready to leave. I'm like, yo, go ahead, man. I put it in there last. We in the back room playing music, bugging out. His pops come in. His, pop, his pops a big time Muslim, you know, one of the higher ups. But yo, we little kids, so I don't know about, you know, that, that. So he said, uh, Hey, Joe, who got this wine in my oven? Joe looked at me and he said, oh, shit, man. He said, oh, Leroy, that's Leroy. I'm like, oh, Joe, what? He said, tell Leroy, come in. So as I walk in the kitchen, he said, hey, Leroy, why you got that swine in my oven? I said, uh, he said, don't you know that shit'll kill you? And he just... Looked at me and touched me in my head and started laughing. He said, yo, I don't allow swine in my house, but it's you. So you got a pass on this one. But stop eating that swine. That should have kill you. Right? So I go back in the back room. I'm looking at Joe. He, he's sweating because that's their religion. They really don't allow pork in their house. But I didn't know nothing about that. But he knew about it, but he didn't know his father was going to look in the oven either. So we say, okay, let's leave. So now we're leaving. Out of 361, 392 is right next to 361. Right across it, we got a, a handball court right there. So we go in that building in 394 and 392. I lived in 392. We did 394. We went to the roof and stopped smoking our trees. Now, we just bugging out. So we said, yo, what you going to do? Now, it was around 830. Uh, now, what we going to do tonight? I'm getting ready to go in the crib, man. Then we hear somebody coming up the step. Boop, 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 it's, it's, it's Derek. Big D was here. He said, yo, Gallo, yo, we getting ready to go make some money on the deuce, man. He said, don't worry about me, because you know that nigga got to be in the house before 10 o'clock. Once the lights go out, that nigga got to be, come on, he got to be in the house. They laughed. Well, he laughed, but me and Joe looked at each other like, yeah, all right. You know, because that's how it was. I had to be in the house at a certain time. So all of a sudden, I said, yo, Joe, we got the weed. We're going to get the munchies soon. Go back in the house and chill out. But yo, man, yo, we got the crew downstairs and they want to go make some money on 42nd Street. 
I'm like, yo, what you gonna do? You gonna go in there? Go on. He said, I don't know what I'm gonna do yet, man. I said, all right, I'm out. I crossed the roof from 394 into 392, go down, go in my crib. I, that's it. It's nighty night for me. Next morning, I hear the DT car pulling up on the sidewalk. Boop, boop, boop. You know how they do, Les? Five o'clock in the morning. Boop, boop, boop. Slamming the doors because they want to wake everybody up to let them know they're here. Yeah, we here. They go run in my building. They run on my floor. I live on the second floor. All you hear is, oh, come here. Don't remember, don't remember. Come here. All you hear is fighting. So my father jumps up and says, oh, shit. They done did something last night. They went and got our next door neighbor, Donald. And that Donald, remind y'all, Donald is the one I almost lost my job for. The first three months on the job, I almost lost my job because when I came in, the riot squad was stomp stomping him out. And while he was stomping him out, I didn't know it was him. Cause I just walked through the door in the bell ring. But something told me to go and see who they were stomping. And when I looked over, and I seen it was my neighbor Donald. I'm gonna tell y'all, man. I blanked out, y'all. Remember, I only had three months on the job. I blanked out, y'all. I'm not gonna lie to y'all. I blanked out. All I saw was my milk, milky cookies, neighbor, friend, as kids in the sandbox getting stomped out. But what really set me off is when I saw this white officer take his foot and was getting ready to put it on his forehead and scrape the skin off his face. When I saw that, y'all, I lost it. I grabbed that officer, I threw him against the wall, y'all. If it was motherfucking pins, I threw that, that wall, he would've been stuck on that motherfucker. And everybody like, yo, what's going on, what's going on? So now the depth said, what's going on? And they said, depth, we don't know, but this officer right here attacked us for this inmate right here. And the depth looked at me. And it's up to you. What you doing? I said, that's my next door neighbor. That's my peanut butter jelly eating neighbor. Let me tell you something. So he said, well, I want to hear nothing. I said, but look, he handcuffed. That's what y'all doing, he handcuffed, man. He, he can't do nothing to y'all. So the death tell me, you come in. They took me in this little office. The death was Death Richards. I love him to death. He taught me very well. I love him to death. He took me in a room, and he said, yo, what that was all about? I said, that officer right there was getting ready to scrape the skin off his forehead, man. What type of place is this? What are you doing? He handcuffed. And the depth said, what? And I told him again. He said, oh, I was wondering who was doing that. Black inmates was walking around with skin peeled off their face because they had a little crew in there would take their boot, put it on their face and scrape it. Like you scraping shit off the floor and the skin will peel off their face. So now the Jeff know who's doing it. Oh, now you know, now he know who's doing it. So now he look at me. He said, I gotta go and talk to the guys because they riled them because you attacked them. And you a new Jack. Man, do what you got to do. Right now, I don't give a fuck. He go out there. He come back in there with me. He said, let me tell you something. I understand you. But one thing you got to understand. I said, what is that? He said, in here, the color blue. You got to understand the color blue. We stick together. I told him like this. Listen, I'm not there yet. You told my color blue, I'm still on probation. And if you color blue and you doing shit like that, I don't want no part of it. He said, no, 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 don't get me wrong. We don't, we, do. we he said, I'm going to take care of that. But he said, color blue, you can't be attacking me. I said, yo, I said, listen, like I told you what it was. I saw him, he looked up at me. I looked down at him and I blanked out. And that's what it is. So he said, don't worry, officer. I'm going to take care of this situation. And that's how I almost lost my job. And here goes Donald. Back, forward back was down. I was just telling you. He was outside. He said, yo, we're going to 42nd Street. Going to make money. They downstairs. The 
cop dragged Donald out the building. Come to find out, you know how it go, y'all. They found somebody on 42nd Street that they thought was a, a, a Vic. At that time, you throw a nigga in a chokehold, beat him to sleep, you dig in his pocket, home run. We all out of here. They said Donald didn't pin him to sleep good enough. The guy that they was robbing. And come to find out the guy they was robbing, the man they was robbing, was a retired detective. So when he feed them out, he didn't feed them all the way out. So when he didn't feed them all the way out, they said the detective pull out his gun and start letting off. Oh, 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 oh. Who gets shot? My best friend, Gal. He gets shot. He got shot in his leg, y'all. That's why it's not worth one night of recklessness. One night of what you think is going to be fun, but you're out there doing the wrong thing, to turn your whole fucking life around. That's what I'm trying to tell y'all. That one, and I told him, go home. Eat your Chinese food. But no, my man decided to go out and make some money that night and they ran up on the wrong one. And he told me why he was on the floor when he got shot. He got shot in 42nd train station, y'all. And he said when the cops got there, you know what they said? You know what they said? While he laying on the floor bleeding, they said, fuck that nigga. Let him bleed out. Let him catch green grain. Green, you know, green green. He said he laid on that floor he said, it felt like he laid on for five hours, but he said he was on the floor for like three hours. It don't take that long for an ambulance to come. So that shit was done, done on purpose. And when they got to him to the hospital, they had to cut his leg off, y'all. They cut my boy leg off. And that, when they cut his leg off, that life, like I said, changed. It changed my life because me and him used to go to school together. We played ball together. We did everything together, but now we can't do that no more because he got one leg. And plus, he's going to jail, so I don't know when I'm going to see him no more. Years later, he comes home, y'all. Years later. He comes home. I see him. I'm happy to see him. Everybody happy to see him. You know what I'm saying? Everybody happy to see him. But my man Gallo was not the same, y'all. He was not the same. I can tell he's not the same the way he was acting. You know, he said, yo, man, I need some pussy, man. I need, I need, I need, you know, I need some. I need a girl, man. I need a girl. And I was like, oh, man. You know, I said, yo, we should introduce you. We got some girls that we just got home and uh, my man Black lived in 361. He was down with us. So Black said, yo, I, I got some girls that want to, you know. So Black told me, yo, I got a girl for Gallo. You know, I said, cool. So we bring the girls. Black crib, we all up there. Then all of a sudden, we heard the girls screaming at Ben. Get the fuck off me. You're crazy. You're a mad man. What the fuck is going on? So we hear Black, we want it, man. The girl, yo, where the fuck y'all get this nigga from? What? He, he just wanna keep right into it. I don't even know his name. He just pulling his thing out for, like, come on, you know what time it is. And we had to grab Jalos and Gallo. Hello, oh, baby, what's up? Do not know hooker, nigga. Do not know hooker. He was like, yo, man, I ain't got no time for this shit. Y'all know how long I've been locked up. And see, the way he was acting, he wasn't the same Joe guy. I know. I go on Joe, but they call him Gallo now. He's not the same. I see a difference in him. So we had to take the girl out of there and say, okay. Gallo don't want to rap. He wants something. You know? He, he, he wants something. He don't want to. So did he get some that night from somebody? I don't know. But the date we hooked him up on, we had to take out because he was just going, he was just trying to go Rambo. 
You know what I'm saying? But this is what I'm trying to tell you. These are the changes in life Jell put you through. Now, this is years later, lads. I'm noticing me and Joe is not kicking it like we used to. We be in Brownsville, everybody come around and Joe there. And keep saying Joe, I gotta call him Gallo. See, I grew up with him from the name Joe, but his name was Gallo, so I gotta show that respect. Gallo, right? And we always did everything together. Now I'm playing basketball. I see him standing on the side. He's looking at me. And then he turned his head. When we were with, with, with the crew, he's looking at me. When I look at him, he turned his head. I'm going to let y'all know. It's only been at least five years ago, last, right before COVID hit us. I went to go see him. And I said, Gallo, I want to talk to you about something. He said, uh, What's up, man? What's up? I said, yo, I noticed something, you know, since you came home, that me and you ain't the same no more, man. We was tougher than ever. Now, you you act like you can't even be around me, man. And he looked at me, Les, he said, yo, you see that? You really see that, huh? I said, yeah. He says, you know what, you're right. He said, you know what, you're right. I said, what? What is it, Gallo? He said, man, every time I look at you, it bring me back to that night when we was getting high on the roof and you told me, go home. Go eat the Chinese food and go home. Don't go to 42nd Street and go try to rob nobody. Go home. And he said, every time I see you, that light, that light flashed back in my eyes. And I remember that night. Then when I look at you, it just comes back to me every time. And he said, he, you know, it's like tears start coming out of his eyes while we was talking. And he was like, if I only would have listened to you that night, I would still have my leg, man. He said, that's why it was hard for me to look at you. But now that you bring it to my attention, that you noticed what was going on, he said, I feel better, man. I feel better. And last, ever since then, now I got my gallo back. Now we speaking and hanging out and everything. It took that less to let it out. To let it out. That's what I'm trying to tell y'all. Jail would not only change your life, it would change your loved one's life too. The people that love you, they're not only affecting yourself, you're affecting everybody down the line. Your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your cousin, your uncle, your nephew, your aunt. You know? So my word to y'all, try to stay out of jail, man. Try to stay out of jail, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm still in contact with so many of my comrades that I had locked up in there. You can't, be, you won't even believe it. It's like I never left them because they're still in contact with me today. And today, we're trying to do big things out there, y'all. I'm going to let y'all know. I'm praying that everything comes into play. But moves are going to be made. And move, things are going to be told that need to be heard. So we're working hard to try to make this movie factor happen, y'all. I'm letting y'all know, man. I've been in there 22 years. I got I can't run out of stories to tell y'all. You understand what I'm saying? I can't run out, nigga. I can't. It's in my brain. Insane in the membrane. Insane in the brain. Les, I want to tell you, Les, my brother Gallo, now he became a pillow up to the community. He's like the president of the South Side. When you see they have the South Side parties and the punk stuff, that came from him, man. He put that organization together, bringing all of us together as one. Every year it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger in Brownsville, y'all. South Side Day. 
I got to salute to Gallo because he came a long way. You know? I got to give it to my brother AJ. And I love all five barrels. When I, when I talk, I'm talking to all five barrels. Because in the thing, I had everybody. Every, all five barrels, I'm giving a shout out to y'all. Y'all hear me on this, this podcast? Listen to me, y'all. Things is happening. Get at me. Because I want you to be a part of it. I want you to be a part of it, man. Because when it go down and the ship start moving, the boat start moving, you can't jump on now. Because it's moving and I ask y'all to be with me. And you know we always keep it real. So that's why I'm doing it to you now. I'm keeping it real with y'all. It's going to happen. Les? You know, this is for the peoples, man. This is for the peoples. You were saying it's a new law that that was passed recently? Yes, there's currently six new laws that's passed recently. Um, one is for habitual offenders. Majority of them address the habitual offenders. There's actually three penal code laws. And the good thing about penal code is that any state law, federal law overrides any state law. So that's the SB 81. We've got our penal code 1170-01. We've also got our racial justice act. This is an act. So if you were used, if someone used a testimony against you and you weren't able to properly um, and you weren't able to properly uh, cross-examine your witness. That's one that you can use um, that will help you get resentencing. So this is for incarcerated individuals currently. We're doing exonerations. Our pleadings are for exonerations and case resentencing with the same resentence judge or another judge. It just depends on how long you've been there. So these are for prisoners that are over, have done at least four years in prison. Um, we also have the... Um, that also goes with the 14th Amendment with the Racial Justice Act of 745. Um, so if you're, nas- uh, if you're currently incarcerated, you have the federal law for Proposition 47 and 64, which are for habitual offenders. This applies to the RICO law. So if you were tried under RICO law, under murder, robbery, drugs, or gun possession, um, this would this would allow you to be resentenced. Um as well as if you were tried in a first degree murder and you were convicted of first degree or second degree murder, following your trial or you accepted charges such as a plea offer, you'd be ex- uh, eligible for exoneration and sentence reduction under the felony. This is another act, the Felony Resentencing Act and SB 81. Now, we also have gang sentencing penal law. So if you, that they say you were gang affiliated and you know, you were, most of these will be our USP uh, inmates. They were gang affiliated and they would say that you, you know, were a, um, what do they, they call it, Com- captain or, you know, a top commander on that, you know how they do that hierarchy? Mm-hmm. If they said you were on that, that gang sentencing penal law will allow you to go in and say, hey, no, I was not, you know, a top tier gang member and this is why I was given so many years. I need this to be resentenced. So let me just kind of go over all the laws again because it's, it's a lot in one. So I kind of want to just go break it down. We have the gang sentencing law. We have the Act for Racial Injustice. We have the SB 1437. That's also saying, you know, we need to be exonerated because the sentences were too long. And a lot of the testimony was done by snitches. Um, or, you know, the police did not, um, you know, they were corruption in the, in, in the police testimony. Or it could be in the prosecutor's testimony. Or it could be in your defense attorney. He did not give you enough uh, discovery on your evidence. He just made you, you know, go ahead and take a plea rather than really fighting your case correctly. Just because you were a habitual offender and they used your old charges against you and your new charges. Um, let's see. There's a few. It's better, to, you know, that you speak with me one-on-one. I can tell you how they... Um, accom- accustomed to your case and I also have a free PowerPoint presentation that we can go over and I can say okay this will go with your case and I see this in your discovery once you give me your discovery <clears throat> excuse me once you give me your discovery we can then decipher how these laws work with you but if you are incarcerated more than four years you qualify 
I can just, that can just give you a roundabout who qualifies. Mm. That's it. That's that's I'm, that's heavy business and heavy news that a lot of people is going to be happy to hear about. Yes, that's our goal. We're trying to get people home. I have a 16 page pleading. I have nothing but U.S. state case laws plus these new laws um i also have uh, our constitutional laws all in my pleading so there's no argument we're just sending it strict strictly to your resentencing judge as well as we're sending it to the state department of justice that'll be the california or whatever state you're in department of justice um and that's that we're we're we're, we're asking for resentencing or we're asking for exoneration or if we currently have a case we're asking for motions to dismiss I have 19 years experience dealing with case law. This is what I do, and, and my target audience is habitual offenders. Oh, uh, as far as pricing for my 16 plea part, my 16 plea uh, motion to dismiss and resentencing, I charge $300. And how did you first get into law? I went to school. I was helping my brother. Actually, he was incarcerated for a whole year. My mother paid almost $10,000 for an attorney. He had no bond, just sitting. And um, I started looking up motions, started looking up case laws. And I was able to get all his testimony. I was able to submit, uh, uh, dismiss all his testimony from the police and what the DA had. Then I filed a motion to dismiss straight to his judge. And next thing you know, he was given um, a bond, a ROR bond. And he was able to come home, but just for a whole year in, in Pennsylvania, just sitting. And my mother paid someone. I just thought that was just, you know, I just I just felt so bad about her beckoning call. So then from there, I went to school at Shaw, went to one year at NCC Central. Then I finished up at Seton Hall in New Jersey. Hmm. I've got plenty of testimonials. I'm easy to reach. Um, I have an assistant that I work with, so I can't get bombarded because what I can't do, she can do. We have plenty, uh, we have plenty of um, testimonials for gun charges, larceny, um, you know, the, the felonies, manslaughter, the felonies, you know, high crime charges. That's what we like to do. DUIs, um, obstruction of justice. They need this type of information. They need this type of hope. I got a couple of people on the channel right now that um got illegal sentences. They they gave them life. I know a right. dude right now. They gave them life. They gave him. He been sitting in the penitentiary since he was 17 years old, and he's 60 something. You feel what I'm saying? And I was telling him, there's no way in the world they should, should be able to give you that much time from an adolescent. Right. That's that's what they that's why these laws are here because they base these they base these uh, sentences off of your juvenile history and that was wrong they did us wrong with that yeah and it really don't it really it, it really probably affects majority of people of color exactly exactly but are you hearing about people that's currently um, coming home off these new They just ones? signed this. They just signed this January 1st. Mm. So just know that. But it's federal. At the end of the day, it came from the, U, U, the DOJ, US DOJ. Mm. But yeah, it's un understand that it just came into place January 1st. But if I know how to I know how to use them with the exact laws and I know how to tailor them to what your crimes were. I go down each and that's why I asked for discovery, discovery, discovery. I go down each and every single factor that the prosecutor had and the indictment. Oh, oh, oh I forgot one big thing. I'm sorry. Also, because of the race equality, if you had like six jurors that indicted you and they were of of your peers, they were 40 year old, 50 year old white men and, and women that know nothing about hip hop. Let's just go there, okay? They know nothing about the black culture. And but you, they, they say you were smoking weed and you were selling weed and whatever the police said, they just went along with it. It should have been a biased jury in the beginning. It should have been Hispanics, Japanese, those between the ages of 25 that were in your age bracket. Let's say you got your charge, you was 18. So somebody on that jury should have been between 18 and 23. You get what I'm saying? Because they are in your na your nationality, your culture, and your your age genre. So that's why these laws are important too, because they were just putting old. They had 60 year old people on on the, on the um, 
on jury trials, six and 12 people that live in the hicks of the mountains. You know what I mean? They don't know anything about urban culture. Mm. Am I speaking facts? Straight fact check facts. me. Straight facts. Fact check me. Look at my testimonials. You know what I mean? I'm here to help people. I know that these mothers need, uh, uh, these single mothers need these daddies home. These girls are just, <clears throat> look at this. You know, there's hands on your knees. You know that girl? Everybody, that's that's that, these young girl, teenage girls models. These girls having babies at 13 years old. Why ain't no daddies in the house? Yes or no? No facts. So that's my mission. That's my mission. That's my passion. This is why I'm here. I can do it. God blessed me with the knowledge. I've been to the best schools. I had the best training and I have a whole team. All my NCC alumni, what I don't know, they know. But we have, we've been doing this so long. You know what we're doing? It's just recycling the real. And now we have six laws that we can put in bold. Your honor, <laughs> look it up yourself, sir. You got Google. Let's do this. I'm, I'm, this now is gone. This robbery is gone. Well, this robbery has to be reduced to the, because the, the, they were doing it by class A, class B, class C felons, class three, class in, in Illinois, it's class three and class four. So what the, What makes it a th- three and four when nobody got hurt, there was no injury? What makes it a three or four? Am I making sense? Yeah. So let's talk about it. I have a free consultations. They can make a, um, they can click my link and put their information in and, uh, you know, to schedule a free consultation with me after three o'clock is usually when I'm able to talk to people and, uh, then email me over your discovery and, um, uh, we go from there. My Instagram is dividend queen. You've been, thank you. Thank you so much for, uh, you know, reposting my content because I'm trying to help people. And that's the best way to contact you on Instagram. Yes, Instagram Dividend Queen, because that way I can answer right then and there, and I have you. I can follow up with you. You get what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's the best way, honestly. Even if they just need a consultation, you know, I don't have to be the one to do it for them. I just want to provide them with the law. You understand what I'm saying? That's big business, man. That's you're a very real individual for that. Thank you. Thank you. And I can explain it. That's the main thing. Everybody can't explain it. Penal Code 1109, Penal Code Reform 654. I want y'all to know these, learn these. Y'all, can, y'all got Google? Y'all can use it. Um, so you said once you did that case for your brother, you just realized that you had a knack for law and then you went in? Yeah. Yeah. I went right to school. Plus my first year, Willie E. Gary, he's like a major attorney that went to um, Shaw University. They did the movie about him. The first year of your law school, he paid for it, so why not? I wasn't doing nothing else. And how old was you when 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 you went to law school? Twenty one. Twenty one. Yeah. I just finished everything in the last two years. I've been practicing the last two, but I worked for nothing but Park Avenue attorneys. I've worked for. Um, you know, civil rights attorneys, Corey Cupfer, you can check, fact check them. I work for Raw Goddess, if y'all ever heard of her, she been on TED TV. Those are my bosses for years. Mm-hmm. So I was doing the work, I just did, I was a law clerk more than an actual lawyer. I just actually got past the bar and everything in New Jersey and Seton Hall after COVID. Mm-hmm. But I was doing the work, I was, I've been an activist since. We, we got issues with our with our group from Raw Goddess. If y'all Google her, Google these people, y'all. Willie e. Gary, Raw Goddess. Uh, Willie Willie H. Harding. He's out of Charlotte. We all out of Charlotte. He's part of our you know little network. We have a lawyer network here because we're small in Charlotte. You know, um, who else I worked with? Name it, I've done it. But this is this is what I do. You know, a uh, Corey Cupfer, Raw Goddess. Those are the main people I work for. I worked for Raw Goddess for almost ten years. Yeah. So that's that. Just be praying for me because this mission ain't they they try to mute me as well. But you know, I'm not gonna stop. What you mean they tried to mute you? Like on TikTok. You know they, they I think they, they took all my sound out when I was trying to explain a lot of people. Mm. Mm-hmm. But we shall overcome y'all for real now. We finna walk brothers out of there. They can't they can't deny it. Y'all made the law. So apply it. If not, guess what? These jugs gonna have to stand down. Man, 
every other week on the news is a different black dude coming home from being exonerated after doing 20, 30 years and all of that. It's, right. it's errors in that system that need to be corrected. Yeah. All right, my darling. We'll right. get in touch, okay? I all appreciate right. you so much. My name is Sarah Mitchell, an attorney with Mitchell Law Firm. I specialize in habitual offenders, expungements. Um, I also am working with criminal defense and those who are currently arrested. We currently have six new penal laws that are in place as well as some California state laws to help get exonerations, um, shorter sentences and resentencing from the judge as well as um, they help if you currently have an open case. Um, I do have a great PowerPoint presentation that breaks it down. Some of the laws are the Racial Equality Act. Uh, we have the Penal Code, give me one moment, let me get them in front of me. The Penal Code 1170, and that's for resentencing for those who are currently incarcerated. Um, let's see, we also have the Racial Justice Act of 745. That's a new act that they got in place. If you you know, we're using social media and they use that in your case or if someone uh, that was accomplished with you used their testimony, you weren't able to, um, uh, you weren't able to uh, cross examine your witness um, for their testimony because, of course, they want to get a plea deal. That's also um, will allow you to get this case. Um, let's see.